One of the prominent features, Ion Kyneton, is a Wickham trolley shed. Now, as our engaged section are busy building a model of the station, I thought it'd be good fun to build a little model Wickham trolley. You're probably familiar with the uh, recently released Backman model in double O gauge. Sadly, Backman don't make anything suitable for the smaller scale, so it's time to dig out a kit. This kit from Thamesmead Models um, is actually now produced by BH Enterprises. Uh, they've taken over the entire range and it's available at a very modest price. Little packet here. Let's have a look to see what's inside. Be careful, the parts are all very, very small. And if I just tear the bag open, what have we got? We have a set of parts and handily a nice, simple set of instructions. Now, a lot of people are quite nervous about building white metal kits because they think, oh, they're a bit specialised. But basically, if you can build an Airfix kit, you know, a plastic Spitfire or something, white metal shouldn't hold any great uh, worries for you. The kit itself is split into seven parts and uh, they are all quite nice and cleanly cast. One of the problems you can have with white metal is because the moulds are fairly cheap, which is what makes it good for cottage industries, but occasionally you'll get a bit of excess material we call flash. You can just see a little bit of it on the back here. Now, you'll need either an abrasive stick or a coarse file. This abrasive stick is from Albion Alloys and available from model shops, but to be honest, you could use the same sort of thing designed for your fingernails from boots. Just a gentle polish on the back, and there we have it, nice and cleaned up. Just the excess material being removed there. The kits will vary enormously. I've had kits that are actually covered in flash and take an awful lot of cleaning up, and other ones like this, they're pretty cleanly cast. The areas to watch for are often along the edges of thin parts, such as the footboards on the model. And here, rather than using the abrasive stick, what I'll do is I'll scrape along with a knife blade. This is a technique from military modelers who use it for sharpening up swords. But you just scrape along with the blade held at 90 degrees and it cleans up the metal very, very nicely indeed without causing any sort of damage to the surface apart from that. And you can work at it quite quickly cut away. Knives are great for this sort of thing because white metal is very, very soft, so you can almost sort of sculpt it. Assembling the parts, again, don't need anything particularly sophisticated. I like super glue. I know a lot of modelers are very scared of super glue because it is allegedly going to go off very, very quickly and they're terrified they'll stick their hands together. It's perfectly possible, but quite frankly, if you're careful with it, you'll be fine. I'm using um, a Loctite brush on super glue because it's a bit thicker than most and is really, really easy to apply. So if I start with the uh, body, or in fact the seats of the rail car, just paint a little bit of glue onto the bottom there. Put the top back on so I don't spill it all over the nice table and other club members shout at me because their teacups glue down to the table and put the two parts together. And I'll just pause for a moment while the glue goes off. Um, super glue doesn't, contrary to popular opinion, go off instantly. It takes a few seconds, so you've got a little bit of wiggle room, but then just hold it. If you're really worried, blow on it, because actually the moisture in, in your uh, breath will help it go off faster. There we are. You can see the, uh, those two parts are fit, fitted. Um, I'm just gonna bend that running board flat with my fingers, because white metal is soft enough to get away with that and then I'm ready to fit the front and back. There's a little bit of overhang with the chassis here. I'm going to take a little bit of what we call fettling, where I just file the back slightly smooth there. White metal is quite a funny material to cast because it shrinks as it casts. That means there's quite a bit of skill involved in making the original master because they have to be slightly different sizes. And the shrinkage can be a little unpredictable, so occasionally you just have to make sure after you've put the parts together that everything's going to fit properly. What I usually recommend is what we would call a dry run, which is literally put the parts together and just make sure they fit before you put any glue in there. It's uh, well worth it, every single part, just to make sure you're getting a nice fit because once you've got glue in, you really don't want to be hanging around too much. So what I'll do now is I will carry on gluing the parts together. And once I'm done, 
we'll look at the next stage, which is preparing for paint. As you can see, it really is quite a tiny little model, this little Wickham. And this one is now ready for me to look at painting. What I've done is I've glued all the parts together and I've just fettled one or two surfaces, particularly the roof, just to make sure that the uh, roof, which goes on between the ends, none of the ends stick out over the top. Little bit of, little bit of sanding with a very, very fine abrasive. You'll find it polishes the metal up. White metal tends to be quite a dull color because it's a lead alloy, but once you polish it, you would be amazed how shiny it comes up. It's actually quite good with a bit of brass, so if you really, really want a shiny model. However, no need for that because this is going to be a workaday piece and the first job is to get some primer on it. You might ask, why do I need to prime the model? And indeed, what is primer? Primer, in this case, I'm using a car primer aerosol can, is a fast drying paint that grabs really, really effectively to metal. There are different types of primer, but actually for white metal, the cheapest stuff will do the job quite nicely. It provides a key for the top coats to adhere to the metal properly. If you don't prime it, very often those top coats can peel off. Now, priming white metal I don't think is actually essential all the time. A lot of the things that you're going to build out of white metal don't get a lot of handling, in which case enamels and acrylics, perfectly normal modelling paints, will stick to the metal quite happily. I would tend to prime locomotives, anything that's going to get a lot of handling, just to avoid the paint wearing off or worse, chipping off when you're actually using it. The uh, little Wickham I have cleaned up, degreased by giving it a little bit of a wash with some washing up liquid and then plenty of water to rinse off any leftover washing up liquid. Um, and then it's ready, for, it's ready for the priming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip around the corner to the uh, club spray booth and give this a little spray. One of the benefits of uh, belonging to a club is access to a spray booth like this. All I've done, sit the model on a little block of wood and give it a spray. Don't put gallons on, you don't want to lose all the detail. Just a little waft over to discolour the metal and that'll be fine. Now, one of the benefits of priming a model like this is it actually shows up any areas you might want to put a little bit of filler into. So if you look at the back edge of the seats, there's just a tiny little gap there and there's also a couple of tiny little gaps on the edge of the roof. That is something that doesn't really show up when the model's in the raw metal, but it shows up beautifully when you've got the primer on. So next job is to put a few little scrapes of filler on there and then it's off to the paint shop and then I can finish the model and give it to the guys ready for the layout. And there we have it, a kind and Wickham ready for display. One final thought, white metal is a metal, it is conductive, so make sure there's a good coat of paint on the wheels before you push it on in an electrically conductive track. You'll notice that the trailer, like the Backman model, I've filled it with a little bit of ballast, stuck in in this case with a couple of dots of super glue just to finish the job. And there we have a Kyneton Wickham ready for the display.